Good morning, ladies and gentlemen uh, of our wonderful community at Bexley Heath Academy. I know what you're thinking, Miss Luther, you were only on our screens a couple of minutes ago, but that's the power of technology right there. And engineering, guys, yes, I've just walked from my office straight to our studio. This morning, you've got a special, very, very special assembly about e-safety that's going to be run by Mr. Reed and Mr. Courtney. It's very important for every single one of us to sit there and listen to what's being said. We are increasingly spending more time online at this moment in time because of virtual learning. And there are some issues around working online all day. There are certain risks that we need to be aware of. And that's exactly what Mr. Courtney and Mr. Reed will be going over. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to take notes. And I want you to share this information with the people in your household. I'm now going to hand it over to Mr. Courtney for this wonderful assembly. Over to you, Mr. Courtney. Mr. Courtney, you're just on mute. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, technical difficulties. And that's what we're going to be talking about, the things that could go wrong online. So very apt, sir. Go ahead. Over to you, Mr. Courtney. I will start that again. Thank you very much, Miss Luther. Of course, I put that in on purpose just to make sure that people understand the problems that we have when we are dealing with online. Uh, so today's assembly is with myself, and Mr. Reed. We're going to be talking to you about e-safety, but we're going to be looking at things of how you can be a bit smarter and thinking about your digital well-being as well as other parts of online work. Now, we've all been spending an increased amount of time on our devices, and I'm sure that we've all relied on them to help us through lockdown. I know that personally, over the Christmas period of lockdown, they were really helpful to me in order to keep in contact with my family and my friends, and it was a different Christmas uh, to what would normally be spent. So they do really play a key part in our lives. The internet then is an amazing source of information for all of us. It can help us with our studies and working from home. We are able to keep in contact with our family and friends, and it provides entertainment to everyone for all ages. However, the internet does have some dangers, and we all, no matter what, how old we are, we need to make sure we are safe and keeping ourselves safe online at all times. During the previous lockdown, there was a rise in young people accessing inappropriate content online across the nation. So this assembly today is all about raising your, your uh, raising the recognition of what might be happening online. And a few facts for you just to begin with. Did you know that according to an NSPCC survey, one in four people in the UK has seen something upsetting on social media. 58% of those young people were upset by someone that they know, and only 22% of those people spoke out about their problem. So what that's telling us is that there's a lot of inappropriateness happening online, and we need to make sure that we are comfortable with what we're seeing, and also that we know who to go and speak to if we have any issues with our online presence. So what's really important is that you learn how to be smart. Now around the academy, you will have seen these smart posters around the academy, which sort of give you the hints and tips that you have to sort of help you keep smart online. So to enjoy the internet and everything that it offers, if you follow these rules, the internet will be a great place for you. So for the S, always keep your personal information safe. This includes your name, address, phone numbers, the school you attend, any of your passwords, your banking details, and never share a person's details with anyone else without their consent. It is extremely important with the passwords that those passwords are kept safely. And remember that when you're setting a password, it should be something that is memorable to you, but is not easy to guess. So therefore you need to be thinking about adding in your capital letters, numbers, special characters to make that password even more secure. M, Never meet to never agree to meet anyone in person without your parents or carers' permission first. Ideally, a family member should be with you if any meeting takes place. Now, of course, during lockdown, we know that's not going to happen because you're all sitting at home nice and safely in your houses working away during the school day. A, do not accept and open any emails, uh, private messages, files or images from an unknown source or someone that you do not know. These may contain a virus. Those viruses then may be used to allow them to access personal information on your computer. You might be able to take over your computer and hack into it. So make sure that they do not 
have anything that you open that you don't understand where it's coming from. Or, so remember that not everyone is who they are and not everyone is honest as you are. Sometimes, make, sometimes people online lie about things like their age, their name, gender, and trying to try and encourage you to talk to them. Make sure that when whoever you are speaking to, they are trustworthy and they are honest. And finally, T, if you ever have something that worries you about online, please make sure you speak to somebody. There are plenty of options for you to speak to someone. You can speak to your family, your friends. You can speak to someone in school. So you can speak to your pastoral manager, some member of the safeguarding team, your year manager, or any other teacher. And if you feel that you need to, you've also then you contact the police as well. And you can use the website CEO to help do that. Some more facts from uh, some research. The average young person posts on social media 26 times a day. So in the course of a school week, you're posting over 120 posts per week in a, in a school week. So you've got to think about what sort of information you're posting about yourself. Is it pictures? Is it just what your mood, how you're feeling? But out of only, out of only six out of those 10 young people's followers are actually people they know. So therefore, that information you're posting about you might think is just for your friends and family, but think about who's in your friends list. Do you know all those friends? Do you actually know them personally? Or are they just somebody that you know online? So you've got to think carefully about what you are posting. What I want you to do is for a few minutes, just think about the way that you connect with others. What devices do you use? What apps do you use? And what sort of things are you posting? On the screen, you will see that there are many different ways in how we can stay connected with each other more and more now because of social media, and they play a huge part in our communication with others. It could be in the form of YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, or WhatsApp, or the many others that we see on the screen. It is important that when you're thinking about those apps, that you're thinking about what do those apps actually allow me to do, but also what information do they collect about me? So every time you fill them in, you're filling out personal information about registering for those apps that that company then keeps. OK, so please think carefully. It's really important that you are aware of what those apps are intended for and their purpose. Each social media app has an intended age audience. Now, for some of you, you may not be aware of that. And if you look at the screen, you will see that the, all of the apps that we have listed are for ages 13 plus. OK, those age restrictions are there to protect the young people from any inappropriate content or images that could be shared via these sites. By using these apps, you are putting yourself at risk. Not only could you see an image or comment that is not meant for your age group, but you could be contact contacted by a complete stranger. Now, we've given you the minimum age requirements for some of the more popular apps. So we can look at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Snapchat. You are meant to be 13 years of age to be able to use that. So therefore, you're thinking at 13, that's towards the end of year eight. So we should be seeing students in year seven not accessing those apps. However, we do know that students who are younger access those apps, and you just need to be aware of what might be on them and make sure your parents are aware of what you're using it for. Other apps such as WhatsApp and the new popular TikTok with all those dance crazy videos uh, is for 16 and above. And then you've got any dating app or Google is 18 plus and Google plus is 13 plus with any parental permission. So they are the sort of main uh, apps that we can see on the internet and use for social media currently to help communicate with each other. But there are some sites that we need to make you aware of that uh, need to be sort of bearing in mind what might be on those. So sites that you should be aware of, uh, Gatcha Life, uh, risks of possible adult themes and content, uh, the app of Talk to Strangers, or Kick, which is another chat platform. YOLO is an anonymous questioning app. House Party or Zoom, you could contact with strangers and possible image sharing. They have become extremely popular over uh, lockdown, but please remember of who you're sharing your details with. And then you have Yubo, which is a dating site for children. Please be aware that with all social media platforms, there is always a risk of stranger danger and grooming if you un 
if you accept unknown followers. So I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Reed. Mr. Reed is going to be able to talk to you a little bit about grooming and what grooming actually means. Over to you, Mr. Reed. So thank you, Mr. Courtney. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. And good morning to everybody. Um, and hope you're all well this morning. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about grooming, and then I'm going to go on to talk about the, how the law affects us a little bit, um, especially you guys when you're under 18. And then I'm going to go on to talk about some of the physical, mental, but also your digital well-being, and it's sort of how you can help yourselves there as well. So thinking up, Mr. Courtney, following on from what Mr. Courtney just said about grooming, he said the term stranger danger. So grooming can also be called stranger danger, and this is where an unknown person makes contact and tries to befriend the young person through social media, like the apps we were just talking about. One of the dangers of the internet is that you may not know who you were talking to, uh, because they may be lying about their age, their identity, or their gender. And this is why it's important to accept requests from people you actually know, and not people that you don't know at all. So, things to look out for. If you're concerned or worried about grooming in any form, um, these are some of the things I would suggest that you look out for um, to, to do. So this per the person may send you a lot of messages. You might find they're, they're bombarding you with lots and lots of messages on a daily basis. They may encourage you to keep your friendship a secret, um, which might make you, which actually doesn't sound right, does it? Um, they may encourage you to keep your, um, sorry, the content of the messages. So while you're talking to them, may, they may suddenly change. Um, or the tone of the messages might change. They might be really, really friendly one minute or one day and then suddenly change and get really aggressive or angry with you um, or vice versa. They may start to pressure you into sending something you feel uncomfortable with. And that's obviously a clear sign of grooming there. They, they may start to make unusual requests online. They may ask for personal details, things that you know you shouldn't be giving out on social media. Or finally, they may start to blackmail you or threaten your threaten you or your family about your friendship and about what, what's happening online. Um, so thinking back then, last in 2019, if you think back during a three month period, something to, to did you know this? In 2019, there were 22,488 reports of a self-generated child sexual abuse image. That's something that the child has done themselves. So three months over that three month period. So it's an image that you've sent to others yourself, um, and that obviously that could be shared without your permission. You cannot control what someone else does with those images that you send them. That's what's the important thing to remember. Do not give in to pressure. Once you have given in, you have lost control. And once you have pressed sent, you cannot take it back. So content shared online can be shared publicly and it could last forever. And then it's out of your control. Now, thinking about the law, there are laws um, and it is illegal to protect you, but it is also illegal to show or share private content of a person without their consent. And it is also illegal to threaten to even do this, threaten to do this. This could be once or it could happen more regularly. If someone intends to cause harm, alarm, distress or embarrassment, they are committing an offence. And there are specific laws to protect you guys that are under 18 in these situations. So, OK, going on to looking after ourselves, what you've got there on the on the on the slide, you've got some campaigns. Now, it's important to look after ourselves and our well-being. And we often see lots of campaigns around. So you might recognise some of these campaigns on the board there. It may be speaking up about mental health, encouraging us to eat better. So, like, so you've got there the Change for Life campaign as well. Um, encouraging us to eat better or current government guidelines like we're facing at the moment to stay at home, save lives and protect the NHS. They're the sorts of campaigns we're talking about. But we also need to think about the impact of our well-being when we are online. Now, when we are online, this is often so referred to our digital well-being, whereas these, these campaigns are to do with our physical and mental um, well-being. When you're looking at digital well-being, uh, there are different ways in which, especially during a, during a lockdown, where, we're, where you guys are sitting there for all day, virtually, doing your lessons, um, there is different ways we can think about how we can help ourselves with our digital well-being. So way, there are different ways to do this. Some of these are supporting and helping others, just to, just to be there for other people. Um, Recognising how the internet makes you feel. So if you've had a hard day and you've been virtually online all day, recognising that actually that is having an impact on you. Managing how long you spend online. Have regular breaks. Um, sometimes it's, you get lost in it, don't you? So you, you're on a lesson, you carry on working, and you make sure you have regular breaks. Be aware of, being aware of what you post. Um, feeling comfortable and happy online. 
So these are all the types of things that um, think to think about in terms of your digital well-being and knowing what to do if something goes wrong. Now, on the following slide, we've also got some I've got some headlines just for you to have a think about. Um, and just go just to have go away, have a discussion with some of these with your friends. Do you agree with some of these? Do you disagree? Um, so some of those there that are have smartphones destroyed a generation. Smartphones are making today's teens unhappy. British teenagers among the world's most extreme Internet users. Social media is harming the mental health of teenagers. And social media obsessed teenagers are so frightened of real life that someone even answered the door. Um, they're all quite negative headlines to do with social media and the internet, but it's, it's giving you thought to have a think about some of those. Um, and we've also got some videos to follow on from this, just to get you thinking about your digital wellbeing and about how to protect yourself and be safe online, which I think Mr. Courtney's got the, the links to on there somewhere. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yep. Reid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show your videos now on the screen so you can watch your videos with us. Uh, the first video is there talking about how would people respond to different messages that they might see online? And the second one is looking at what we call empathy. So empathy there is about how do, how do you think other people may feel based on the information you're sharing? So we're gonna watch two short videos uh, which will talk you through those two key areas. Thank you. Welcome back, uh, everyone from Bexley Academy. Just want to say that I understand there's been some technical issues with the sound from the videos. So we have asked that uh, Miss Luther is going to send you out the links to the videos so that you can watch them at the end of the assembly, uh, looking at those two areas that we've talked about. So back to what we were talking about earlier. So Mr. Reid brought up those headlines about do smart has smartphones destroyed a generation? Are they making teens unhappy? And we are one of the world's 
most extreme internet users. So these are headlines that you should really think about. And do any of these actually apply to them to you sitting at home now? And do any of them sort of resonate with what would you, what your online presence is like? Do you feel that social media has become too much pressure on you, and therefore that is harming your mental health? Okay, so please do think about those different headlines. And when Miss uh, Luther sends you out the links to those videos later on, then you'll be able to think back and look about what we've talked about in this assembly. So some top tips to be aware of and think about uh, while you're online. And the first one is to think, okay? Just like you are in lessons every day, you are thinking and you are trying to develop yourself as a person. So before you post anything or share anything online, think about why you're posting it. Are you posting that because you want to uh, showcase your brand new presents that you got at Christmas time? Are you posting it because you want to share a supportive message to a friend? Are you supporting? Uh, are you are you supporting a cause that you want to share? So think about the reasons why you might share some of that information. But then think about what might be the repercussions. Might people be upset or hurt by what you're sharing? And do I really need to share it? So when we think back to earlier in the assembly, when we talked about how the teenagers send on average 26 posts per day, is it really important information that you need to share with everyone in your friends list? So you've got to make sure you think about that. Second of all, you've got to think about the privacy settings. Make sure that you enable the privacy settings on all of your apps and accounts. So every app that you have access to will allow you to lock and restrict your account so that the public cannot see. So that you can therefore make sure that the information you are posting is only visible to those friends and family that you have given permission to do so. And finally, third of all, be kind. Do not share the personal information or, or images with other people without their consent. You know, you've might have taken a picture that you think is funny of somebody else, but they might not think it's funny on their behalf. So think about if you're posting a picture, would you be happy if that picture was posted of you? So another video that will come out in the links is a video from Harvey. So if you are like my household and we were a fan of Strictly Come Dancing uh, over sort of the awesome term, uh, then you would have heard of the social media star Harvey, who took part this year. Uh, a few years ago, he made uh, a video with a friend discussing how they can be kind to each other. So as part of the videos that will come out later on today is this one. Now, Harvey, of course, has experience in this due to Harvey being a social media uh, star and making sure that he has millions of viewers across his platform who join him with regular updates. So he's one of the ones who you could relate to a little bit better when it comes to accessing information. When we talk about being kind, uh, I think it's important to look at some examples of people being kind and the sort of things that they're saying. So we've got a par so we've got somebody saying, my friend was feeling sad one day, so I sent him a picture of myself dressed as a clown. I wanted to cheer them up and it worked. They couldn't stop laughing when they saw me in the school the next day. So you're doing something there which is powerful and it's going to cheer somebody up. So there's a clear, kind purpose behind it. And some of those would be really bright and see those people being happy uh, if someone was a friend of yours was sad or if for one reason unhappy. Uh, somebody else shared a video of myself doing weekend work at our local animal shelter because they want to try and encourage people to volunteer at that shelter or to volunteer in any other form. So you're maybe trying to support a cause, which is really good. Other examples are, I've shared videos and images of me doing art, music, to, to share my creativity, to inspire myself and to support my friends in their hobbies. So I know that last lockdown, we had a very successful uh, virtual art club uh, and that was allowing students to demonstrate the skills of art that they had. And I know that some of the lessons last year in terms of music, we had uh, Mr. Yates drumming in the kitchen with his saucepans and wooden spoons. And again, sharing those videos is about being creative. And it's really important during this time that you find ways of being creative at home in, in areas that interest you and your hobbies. 
And the final example is I shared videos and images of me with my friend to show her how much I care about her and how much her friendship means to me when she's going through a rough time. There's nothing better than sometimes looking through your, your history and seeing those examples of times you spent with your family, with your friends, that maybe isn't possible now, but something you can share again and reminisce about the great time that you had with your family or friends uh, in that picture. And sharing that with them might just brighten up their day. So we've talked about the issues and we've talked about your sort of digital well-being, but it's really important to think about where you can access your support if you need to speak to someone further. So there are a number of websites that are on the screen at the moment, all of which will give you support and help for accessing anything online that you're unhappy with and how you're feeling. So it's really important that you can access these, but please do remember that you can also speak to family, friends, and any of your teachers in school if you've got any problems uh, online. In school, and while you're working remotely, we do a lot to make sure you are safe. So when you are logged in to your school email address on your browser, we are able to monitor the use of the internet to ensure that you are using the internet safely and appropriately. To enable us to be able to safeguard our students, we, we encourage you all to log into your school account via Google browser each day. And by logging in with that, we are then able to protect you and to make sure that you are safe. What we get is we get a report of any sites that are inappropriate that you might have visited, conversations that you have had, films, music, videos that you try to watch, and even if you've deleted what you've written, each keystroke is monitored. So we're able to monitor your, your work online from a distance to make sure that during this time of virtual learning, you are safe in your home, doing what you should be doing, and therefore your parents know that you're safe as if you would be in school. So if you have any concerns, please do let us know. Make sure that you are aware of that when you are signed in to uh, your Google account. When you step away from your, your computer or your device, please make sure you lock the screen or close the lids so that nobody else can access your account and use it without your permission. Uh, so it's really important that you start to look after yourself, understanding what can go wrong. And then finally from me, uh, we are in a time of a national pandemic. Uh, it is a local lockdown. It is a national lockdown. So we've got our normal COVID safety messages for you. Wear your face mask when you're in any communal areas. So that might, so in school, I would be in the corridors, canteen or at the toilet. But when you're at home, that might be going outside, going to a shop. If you use public transport, please ensure that you're wearing your face mask at all times. You need to maintain a two meter distance when you're outside walking with other people. You should sanitize your hands as often as possible and avoid touching your face, making sure that you're using sanitizer and you're making sure that when you're washing your hands, you are using soap. And remember, sticking to that 20 second rule, uh, you can think about the Beck Potato song that was made famous by a comedian uh, during the first lockdown. And I'm sure you can Google the Beck Potato song. So if you can't remember, apparently if you sing it and wash your hands, that's the time that you should be spending. Uh, when putting on and removing your face mask, also please make sure you uh, sanitize your hands. And finally, make sure you're staying at home. The only reason you should be leaving your home is to uh, go to uh, that daily part of your exercise. You should not be meeting with friends. And your idea is, to, as part of the government message, to stay at home, protect the NHS, to save lives. Uh, thank you very much for your time in the assembly uh, this morning. I apologize that those videos didn't work, but those videos will come out to students that you can watch them at home to, to, to see what we would have talked about. Uh, it is now 9.30, so you need to return to your period one lesson where your teachers will be waiting for you and you'll be able to continue with your studies for period one. Have a good day, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you again shortly. Bye now.